So right, we are here once again with the love languages of God, fruit of love. Tonight we have the epic apostle Andre Shaw. He is hailing from none other than Rochester, New York. He has been in the gospel preaching and teaching for over 20 years uh, in the realms of pastoring, evangelist, you name it. Apostle Andre Shaw is married to the lovely prophetess Tangie Shaw. She's also known as the prophetic wind. And we thank God for him and his ministry and his legacy that he is leaving for us in a time like this. Apostle Andre Shaw, please say hello to the people. God bless everyone tonight. I trust you're doing fine. I thank God for this opportunity to be able to share with you on the line tonight, giving honor to Jesus Christ who is the head of my life, and giving honor to the Holy Spirit who guide and direct my life and your life. Giving honor to my wife who is on the line tonight, Dr. Tantra Shaw, and also to you, Prophet Drone, for blessing me and allowing me to be uh, with you as a guest on the line. I'm excited tonight. I'm looking forward to what God is going to do. And to the hearers thereof, I pray that you be blessed and that heaven will smile upon you. Amen. That was precious, sir. That was so precious. Uh, And I am thrilled about tonight. I'm excited as well. Um, There was so much that happened on today. And I know that there are angels, that there are angels watching us, watching over us. I'm not going to go into everything, every detail. But I do know that we have tapped into something uh, worth sharing. We've tapped into something that's the people of God. Amen. Anytime you talk about love, you're talking about blessing. And tonight we're going to be we're going to be kind of summing up um, the love languages of God's love, fruit of love, and what is love? We we talked about this. Um, we talked about human love. The, the human expression, the human expression of love, comes to us in in the multiple uh, multiple facets. And, they can be multiplied uh, by emotions, and those emotions are sometimes tied or linked by influence. These influences uh, trigger uh, and are triggered by events, whether they are happy, sad, challenging, or even easy. But they are thought-provoking. But uh, in that sense, we talk about love, but true love or divine love is, is something different. You see, uh, divine love has no, no limits. It's unconditional. It's limitless because we, we serve or we should serve a limitless God. I know that you and I serve a limitless God, Jehovah, who, who, whose range of love cannot be measured from us to him. It's impossible because it's infinity. However, what we can measure or what can be measured is the, the love that we have for one another. What I mean by that is uh, it's that point. It's that, it's that point, that thing that we point our finger at when it comes to the imagination or the portrait of the images of what we deem as brotherly love and what it should look like. See, it's, it's this balancing act uh, of uh, equality despite race and ethnicity, despite gender or classification of status, uh, whether you are intellectual or non-academic, see, it's 
this love that that we uh, <laughs> we're challenged with mm-hmm. just to be real and why are we so challenged why is this so important in the world that we live in today maybe maybe because we uh, we need insight we need the insight enough to know that uh, there comes a time that we must operate, you see, from brokenness to healing and from healing to wholeness. This is um, seemingly the mystery, Apostle Shaw, is the mystery of the fellowship. Uh, on the other hand, divine love gives us provision to be one. I think you called it oneness. And tonight's reflection, though, of love in the, um, this series in which we have entitled The Love Languages of God, we hope to promote the love revival. Pastor Andre Shaw, are you ready, sir? Yes, sir. As much as lie is in me, I am ready to give unto you. As Paul said in Romans, the uh, first chapter, and I believe it's the 11th verse, he said, my desire is that I might see you, that I might impart unto you some spiritual gifts to the end that you might be established. And tonight, uh, my point or my prayer and hope is to bring establishment to the listeners thereof. Those who are listening on the line tonight, my objective is that you might be established by impartation of the Word of God tonight. Mm -hmm. And so, Prophet Drone, I'm ready if you are. Oh, yes, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. (laughs) Uh, Because I know we're going to be receiving knowledge and this knowledge that we're going to be receiving mm, is going to bring about spiritual maturity. <laughs> yes, Lord. Uh, I'm reminded of Ephesians 4 and 13, and but before I give it back to you, it mm-hmm. says, till we all come in the unity of faith, of the faith, mm-hmm. and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man. Amen. There you go. Oh, wow. That's powerful. <laughs> Bless God. Oh, that's powerful. Now, that precedes the thoughts that I have in my heart tonight that I believe God would have me to convey. And so my yes, attempt tonight, uh, Prophet Drum, uh, we've been involved in the love languages of God, the fruit of the spirit of love for the last three weeks, I would say. This will be a part four. And it's my attempt tonight to, if by chance, to connect the dots and bring this love that is so sweet and so wonderful into a practical lifestyle, especially into this day and time, okay? In an hour that we're living in where there's so much hate, so much division, and so much destruction. And so, if I may, I would like to share and start off with one passage of scripture. Of course. And this is a thought-provoking scripture. In the book of Hebrews, the 10th chapter, we see here in the 23rd verse and the 24th verse, it says, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. For he is faithful that promise. And let us consider one another, watch this, to provoke unto love and unto good works. Why is love so important to God, number one, and number two, to the believers as a witness of the person of God living in our life? And that is because love produces good works. God is good. And we all know 
that God is good. There is no evil in him. And so I shared with you in past um, conference calls that the apex of the nature of God is love. Why? Because this is the evidence of God's good work or the goodness of God, especially to save humanity. Okay, in order to save humanity, being cut off and being uh, alienated from the life of God and the, and the knowledge of God, God, by his love, had to draw us to himself. So the wrath of God worketh not repentance, okay? But through loving kindness, God said, have I drawn men? And so God uses love as the apex of his nature to draw a man who has been rebellious against him, who has been uh, an enmity or an enemy to him. He chooses, he uses the greatest weapon in his arsenal, and that is love. Praise God. Because love is a man that's without fail. Love is the greatest force in the character of God. And so here, even the Hebrew writer says that we ought to provoke one another. Amen. So what is, the, what is the practical life of every believer? That is to be provoked and to provoke others to love. Wow. And so we must understand, as I shared in past um, conference calls and past conversations, that we are loved. Because we've been born of God. We've been born of the Spirit. And so I want to just go a little bit deeper real quickly for the time being that we have. Is to let us know that the greatest gift God has given you and I is love. It is the fruit. It is the produce. It is the life and the character of the person of the Holy Ghost. Another scripture I'd like to share with you real quickly, found in 2 Corinthians, the second chapter, uh, first chapter, I'm sorry. Uh, but as God is true, and our word toward you was not yea or nay, for the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, even by me, and Sylvanius and Timotheus was not yea and nay, but it was, but in him was yea, always yes. And I think I heard that song as we came on, yes. <laughs> There's a song I heard, I believe, either earlier this week or one of the songs that you had in the intro. Uh, For all the promises of God in him are yea. Every good and perfect gift comes from above. All right? And God would not withhold love from you and I, okay? The nature and the person of God in love has been given to us by the Holy Ghost. And therefore, it is called the fruit of the Spirit. It is the produce or the product or the evidence or the witness of the person of the Holy Ghost living inside us. All right? For all the promises of God in him are yea, and in him, amen, unto the glory of God, even by us. Now, he which establishes us with you in Christ and hath anointed us is God, who hath also sealed us and given us, watch this, the earnest, the earnest of the Spirit, where? In our heart. You know, a lot of people talk about double portions of the anointing, you know, a portion of the anointing. I want a double portion. I want a double portion. But if you read John, the fourth chapter, it speaks and declares that Jesus had the anointing without measure. There was no limitation on the anointing when it came to Jesus. He knew nothing about a double portion 
He knew nothing about a portion. He only knew the fullness of the Holy Ghost. Okay? And that same anointing, beloved, we have received. What have we received? We have received the earnest of the Spirit of God where? In our hearts. So being that we have received the earnest of the Spirit of God in our hearts, we can, by faith, walk in the Spirit in the fullness of love. I know it seems to be impossible, but by the Spirit of God that is in you and I, which we have become love, we can express that love in our faith and in our actions towards one another. Paul, over in 1 Corinthians, let's look at the 13th chapter. He begins to make it clear what love is. It is not a mystery, beloved. He gives us a person of love in action. And so what he does, he uses the word charity, okay? He uses the word charity to give us the type of love you and I supposed to be provoked to do. Love is an action word. Love is not love until you give it away. And in the 13th chapter, in the first verse, it says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels, and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gifts of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains and have not charity. I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profits me nothing. Charity, this is love. What I said uh, the definition of love was to me in an acronym, liberty of a voluntary expression. So this is something that we are free to do. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And we know that the enemy of love is fear. Perfect love casts out all fear. And also in John, I shared with you earlier, that they that obey the commandments or have the word of God in their heart, is the love of God perfected where? In us. And so though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profit me nothing. What does charity do in action? It suffers long. It is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity it not itself. It's not puffed up. Doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked. It thinks no evil. It rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never fails. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Isn't that something? A prophecy can fall, y'all. A prophecy can fail. Those that are listening to me on the line tonight and that we're here later on. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But this is a very pivotal scripture that we all need to take to heart. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away with. Other words, the gifts of the Spirit are there to assist us until that which is perfect come. And what is that thing that is perfect? Well, you know, the world that we live in today, it is easily accepted that there is no one perfect. No one can't be perfect. 
perfect cannot be achieved. But when we have, by the Holy Ghost, allow the maturing of our love to reach its apex, perfection can be achieved. This perfection will allow you and I to do good. One, to God first, and number two, to our fellow man. Now, in the fifth chapter of Matthews, chapter 5, chapter 6, chapter 7, some chapter 8, we call it the Beatitudes of Jesus or the Sermon on the Mount. But when I read it and I look at it, I see it as a constitution of the kingdom of God. <laughs> Matthew chapter 5, Matthew chapter 6, chapter 7 it is called to me a constitution of the kingdom of God. This is the conduct, hallelujah, glory to God, that we are believers are instructed to be like, not act like. But to be, remember, we are the fruit of the Spirit, okay? We are the produce of the Spirit. We are a product of the nature and the character of the Holy Ghost, which is the power of God. Jesus said that when the Holy Ghost come upon you, you shall receive power to be my what? Witnesses. This power. It's the apex of God's nature and character, which is love. Now, there's another scripture I'd just like to share with you out of the book of John. This is Jesus' mm -hmm. prayer. Did you have a question? Uh, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm holding them. Please hold okay. <laughs> Yeah. All right. This is the mm -hmm. 17th chapter of John. And thank you for allowing me the time to share this. Uh, in the 17th chapter of John, and the 17th verse, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And so what Jesus is saying, that as God sent Jesus, so Jesus is sending us. And, and, and this is a very powerful statement. In the 19th verse, it says, and for their sakes, I sanctified myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. What is the Holy Ghost? He is the spirit of truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their words, that they all may be what? One, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory, hear this real good, beloved, and the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them. Wow. You know how we oftentimes say God will give the glory to no other. But through Jesus Christ, in this prayer, he prayed to the Father that the glory that he will receive will be also given to us. I'm still talking about the power that is available to us to love. All right? And the glory which thou gave to me I have given to them, that they may be one, even as we are one, I in them and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one. Listen to this revelation, beloved. Listen to this mystery. I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect and one. So there is a dimension that you and I can reach where perfection becomes a reality in our oneness with the Lord Jesus Christ by the Holy Ghost. What is this saying? That the same character, the same nature that Jesus had, he is not impartial to impart unto you and I by the Holy Ghost in its fullness, not in double portion, not in a portion, but in oneness. And through that oneness, you and I can 
operate in perfection. That's what Paul was saying. When that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away with. We give a lot of glory to prophecies. We give a lot of glory to speaking in tongues. We give a lot of glory to understanding the scriptures. But there is nothing more glorious than oneness. And in that oneness, we can, watch this here, be what Jesus is. And in that being what Jesus is, we can express the apex of God's nature, which is love, even towards our enemies, even towards the most unlovable, even towards those that frown on us and put, and put us down. Okay? Why? Because we live in another thought life. We live in another dimension. We have been redeemed. We have been made one. Watch this. Watch this. And that the world may know that thou hast sent me, the 23rd verse, and thou hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Father, I will that they also whom thou givest me be with me where I am that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me. For thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, glory to God, the world hath not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known thee, and that thou hast sent me, and I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it. Watch this that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them and I in them. The same love that the Father loved Jesus will be where? In us. It will be mm. in us. That means Jesus' person, watch this, going back to the 23rd verse, that I in them and thou in me that they may be made perfect in one. This is the mystery of the fellowship, Dr. Brown, we talked about. That the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. How did God love Jesus? He loved him so much that he allowed him to sit at his own right hand and has given him mm, 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 a place in the person of God. And so that person now dwells in you and I because Jesus prayed this prayer. And so therefore the love that is in God now, whoo, glory, resides in you and I that you and I may be able to do good and not evil. But you know that goes right back to what you said. You know, liberty of a voluntary expression. Yes. And that's the produce, mm -hmm. the produce of the product. And you also mentioned that who is love? You said we are love, which I yes. totally agree with. Mm -hmm. But then you said something that I said, oh, we, I have to really let him un unravel that, unpack that. And you did. I just want to take it a different uh, approach or a different avenue to that when you said the apex of the nature of God is love. Now, when you said that, I saw something this time that I haven't really been able to express until now. Okay? Mm -hmm. And so I know that uh, an apex is, let's just say, is the tip of a mountain, right? So we can have a visual. Yeah. And so now the tip of a mountain means there must be a base of the mountain as well, right? But now we know we can't see the base of God's Ooh, mountain. Okay. But let's just say, you know, uh, for for time's sake, because that's a whole different conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, if we can open up this apex, you know, in it we see the range of the development stages of the man, you know, or the woman. And what I mean by that is, uh, you know where I'm about to go, right? The natural man to the carnal man to the spiritual man. And First Corinthians, you mentioned First Corinthians uh, 13, 
which is the hallmark, I believe, scripture for love, which is charity. But yeah. also, uh, to piggyback on that, 1 Corinthians, I believe, 2 and 14 says, and this is going back to that range, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolish unto him, neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned, meaning you have to have some type of awareness, right, uh, to what's being done in the spirit realm, you know what I mean, as, as it relates to God, uh, God's spirit, right, because we know there are good and evil spirits. Yes. But then, uh, you know, First Corinthians going on to the third chapter then kind of uh, links up to the carnal man and is saying, I think, in uh, First Corinthians 3, 1 through 3, and, and I, brethren, this is Paul again, this is one of his epistles, um, could not speak unto you as spiritual, but unto carnal. So now he has gone to the next gauge uh, of the development of man, right? Now he's saying, uh, uh, you know, I have to speak to you as a baby, right? But now even as a baby, and I think you told me this uh, months ago, that, uh, you know, a baby uh, predator does not know how, in most cases, does not know how to um, arm itself or attack or knows maneuvers like a mature predator does. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but the adult lion or whatever has to teach the cubs uh, how to go and hunt. And so this is what I believe this scripture is teaching us, how to war, how to war in the spirit. Uh, and what are you warring against? And they say you're warring against envy and strife and division. But then to move quickly here to get back to you, then we go to the spiritual man. Now, again, this is all pointing uh, the finger toward the apex of the nature of God's love because we love uh, in human form. Like we have human love, right? But we know love comes from God because God is love. And, is, and because, uh, you know, God loves us, not because we love him, but because he is love, like you said mm-hmm. a few weeks ago. And I agree with that. But then we have the spiritual man, right? And that's that's First Corinthians, again, third chapter. And I, brethren, could not speak to you uh, as to spiritual. And that, that goes, uh, that links up to, I believe, you know, one of my favorite chapters, uh, Ephesians 1 and 3. And so, now, why are we saying all this? We're saying all of this because you said something. You said the apex of the nature of God is love. But then you had the audacity, Apostle Andre Shaw, to say something in addition to that. You know what you said? What did I say? So you said love is the greatest arsenal. Oh, my goodness. And I said, now I know he know what he said. <laughs> and, and, I, and I want you to go to that a little bit because I know Arsenal, being a military man, is a house that manufactures weapons, you know, mm-hmm. of, of military uh, equipment and military arms. And it's also a collection point where they actually collect the weapons for war. But then it's also a storage point. Ooh. And I'm not really trying to go there, but and, I, and, I, and I'm, about, I'm about to release this mic back to you after I say this. I'm reminded of Jeremiah, and this comes from one of my teachers, um, uh, evangelist and, and prophet Wayne Morris, gave me this scripture when dealing with spiritual warfare that comes out of Jeremiah 50, Jeremiah 50 and 25, which talks about the uh, God's armory, okay? And so now when you're opening up this armory uh, of God, which is limitless, again, his armory is limitless, but you have in the armory, you have love. And like you said, the arsenal of love is in this armory. And I know that's another teaching, but I'm just saying, man, you tap, you tapping on some things here, Apostle. Uh, so the first, but let me get a mic back to you. Yes, sir. Well, the first thing that the armory of God, or the weapons of God, is for, is to destroy the enemy in the me. Okay, and the three forces 
that hinders me from walking in the fullness of God is fear, doubt, and unbelief. That's inside me. Having remembrance of the character and the nature of the fallen man. And, and, and the old man is dead. Let me just say this here. He's dead. He's buried. Okay, and a lot of times we hear saints say, you know that old man, he's going to come back. See, but he can't come back if he's dead. That's only a familiar spirit. Okay? And we have been commanded not to have no dealings with a familiar spirit. Why? Because we got the Holy Ghost in us now, which is the comforter. All right? And what does the word comforter mean? What does the person of the Holy Spirit mean in a comforter? He makes you and I and all the believers comfortable with the ways of God. Okay? Now, I, I don't hope to walk the beaten path with this, but in 1 John, in the third chapter, 1 John, the third chapter, pronounces that we are the love of man of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. And that's in the third chapter, right? Now watch this here. I'm going to go there real quickly. But it seems like he stops in the middle of his statement and said, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, and this is not talking about the second advent or the coming of Jesus, but this is talking about, watch this here, the uh, manifestation of Jesus by the person of the Holy Spirit. We shall be like him, but we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifies himself. Wow. Even as he is pure. Whosoever committed sin transgresses the law, for sin is transgression of the law. And we know that he was manifested to take away our sins, not cover it, not pacify it, but to take it away. And in him is no sin. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth not, whosoever sin hath not seen him, neither known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. He that doeth righteous is righteous, even as he is righteous. Remember, the gifts of the Spirit are a derivative of the fruit of righteousness. Okay? Uh, love, joy, peace. All those of the fruit of the Spirit are, are, are witnesses to the fruit of righteousness. He that committed sin is what? Of the devil. For the devil sent it from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might do what? Destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. Wow. Is this, uh, am I reading this thing right? <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> Other words, whosoever is born of God can do good and live right towards his brothers, towards his fellow man, and guess what? Towards himself. That's why the scripture says that uh, the commandments hang on these two. Love the Lord thy God with all thy mind, soul, and strength. And thy neighbor as thyself. And if we do that, we fulfill the rest of the commandments. Okay, watch this here. For his seed remaineth in him. And he cannot sin because he is born of God. Here's the produce. Here's the product. Because the seed of God remaineth in the believer. Watch this here. And because he's born of God, it is saying that he cannot sin. And in this, the children of God are manifested and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth right, doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. Real quickly, I'm fascinated by lions. And we know that Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. And one of the things I learned about lions, Dr. Jones, is that if a male lion has a prize, he pretty much is the head over that pride, okay? And mating with the female lions, he produced cubs or produced seed after his kind. But now if an invading lion comes in and fights or wars against that particular lion and defeats him, 
What happens next? Well, the female lions go and hide the cubs. They have to hide the cubs because after he kills the, 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 um, the lion that was once the leader of that pride, once he kills him, the first thing he begins to do is sniff out the seed of that lion. Oh, glory to God. And he goes and destroys every one of those seeds of that uh, pre-reigning lion. Once he destroys the seed of that pre-reigning lion, then the lioness, okay, goes into heat. And he begins now to bring forth his own seed through that pride of lioness. This is what Jesus does. This is what he sends the Holy Ghost to do once he saves us. He begins to sniff out, glory to God, through the word of God, the seed of Satan that remains in us, in our minds, in our flesh, in our old nature. And the first objective of his is to kill the seed of Satan in us. Glory to God. And as he kills and destroys the work of Satan in our lives, he then begins to now, watch this here, produce his own and bring forth his own. That's why he's called the lion of the tribe of Judah. Glory to God. And so he destroyed Satan and he defeated the enemy. He took away our sin. What is the next objective? It's to sniff out the remaining seed of Satan in us. That's where the war begins first. And once he destroys that seed of Satan, he brings his full person in us and brings forth now the fruit of the Spirit. And guess what? We can begin now to do what he do, be as he be, because we are of his seed. Glory to God. And we can love and we can destroy the works of the devil and other people's lives through love. That's how powerful love is. And so it is a nature now in us whereby we can fulfill chapters 5 of Matthews, chapter 6 of Matthews, and chapter 7 of Matthews. Those are the constitution of the kingdom of God. And what is the kingdom of God? Romans 14, 17. For the kingdom of God is righteousness, joy, peace, and the Holy Ghost. <laughs> We're victorious. Apostle, Apostle Andrew Shaw, we are, we are out of time, but I, I feel led by God to do something special tonight. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. I want you to release us out uh, with an oh, altar call and with a prayer. But before you do that, I want to say this. Um, there was a lot of insightful information that went forth tonight. Yes, Lord. Now, if we take the information and we make it practical, mm -hmm. meaning we apply it to our everyday life and we operate in it and we grow in it then we will learn the mystery of fellowship mm -hmm. we will learn to be seated in a place with Christ Jesus and this place is oneness Yes. It's oneness. It is oneness. Apostle Andre Shaw, you got it. As I close out tonight, Dr. Jones, as I pray to make this off the call, to the listeners and to those that would hear this later on, in 1 in first Thessalonians, third chapter, the 11th verse, it reads as follows. Now God himself, hallelujah, and our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ direct our way. And the Lord maketh you increase and abound in love, 
one towards another and towards all men, even as we do towards you. To the end, he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God, even our Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. This is my prayer for you. Father God, I pray tonight as we end, O oh God, the subject of love, a profound subject on the fruit of the Spirit. My prayer is for all those that are listening will receive this knowledge and information and take the love wherewith they have been made of and do good works and that they will know that this gift, this fruit God has given them by way of the Holy Ghost is probable right now. And we can do what is impossible in love, even towards our fellow men, even towards all men, especially those who are the household of God. And that you would direct our way in Matthews, the fifth chapter, Matthews, the sixth chapter, Matthews, the seventh chapter, as we learn the constitution of the kingdom of God which is the way we ought to walk. He told us to walk in the spirit that we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And now give us this grace, I pray, for all those that are hearing. Heal, forgive, and strengthen those who have been hurt, harmed, and been misused and abused, and is afraid to walk in this apex of love because when that which is perfect has come, that which is in part shall be done away with. And we as the believers of God can in this life and in this body experience perfection. In the precious name of Jesus, I send power out over this airway to break every yoke, every heavy burden, every oppression, every possession of the seed of Satan which has been taken out of us through the love of God, that we might be the sons and daughters of God right now in the earth. Because as you are, Lord, so are we in this world. And I say thank you for the miracles, signs, and wonders that shall take place in the lives of us believers. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Thank God. Amen.